Ivo for the fifth straight time. And that win against Buffalo for Bowling Green, something they're used to. The last eight wins for the Falcons, all within single digits. If that's any indicator for today, we should be in good, for a good one, Riley. Central Michigan controls the ball first. As there's Kevin McKay, who helped lead those Chippewas to a win with his 16th double-double on the season. And they're just happy to have him back in that lineup. Dallas Morgan gets us started off it offensively, and the last time, Eli, you talked to Coach Keno Davis, he referred to Dallas Morgan as instant offense. And that's exactly what he is, whether they've used him off the bench this year, back in that starting lineup like he is today. Dallas Morgan has been someone they can lean on in that offensive side. So here comes the Bowling Green offense. And the first shot will be no good from Tyler Matos, from Tyler Matos. And this is another thing they've missed from Kevin McKay. He gets that defensive board and pushes the ball with pace. And it creates shots like really opening up his shot selection this season, shooting from outside quite a bit more. He's shooting it at nearly 30% this season. So a 5-0 start for Central Michigan against one of the toughest teams in the Mid-American Conference. And now they're trying to lock up on defense. And a reason why these Falcons are so tough, they're used to coming back from being down in that Buffalo game. Double-digit deficit at halftime. The most reliable offensive options for the Falcons. There you can see your Central Michigan starting five, including Kevin McKay, who had that double-double, and also David DeLeo, who's nearing that record for three points in a career. Dylan Fry, already the career leader for Bowling Green. And Dylan Fry, I'm sure you guys see it today, he's absolutely lethal from behind the three-point line, and almost in the way Dallas Morgan is. He shoots those attempts that really aren't good shots if you're anybody else. And here is Dylan Fry, trying to find the open man. And a nice move down low, but it won't go down for Caleb Fields. Here is Dylan Fry. Trying to find the open man. And a nice move down low, but it won't go down for Caleb Fields. Central Michigan trying to run, but there's the defense. Dylan Fields. Central Michigan trying to run, but there's the defense. Dylan Fry with the oop and the flush. And he knew where his 6'6 teammate Dequan Plowden exactly was. That's what makes Fry so dangerous. Always has those eyes up looking for open teammates. Dallas Morgan from outside and he's got it. The bench, but his points have been much needed for Central Michigan. CMU starting two for two from the three point line. That's a nightmare if you're the Falcons. Turner tries to get it back on the other end, no good. And a loose ball, five. trying to defend their home court again, just like they have all season. 10 and one record at home. That equals the best of the Mid-American Conference. Dallas Morgan from outside again, and he's got it. He was just one for five from three against Western Michigan. Kind of a quiet day, and it looks like he's itching to get back out here as he's already, like you said, two for two. Bowling Green's gonna wanna keep their eye on him. Give him no space from there. And Turner tries to step through down low. It's no good. And another foul from there. And Turner tries to step through down low. It's no good. And another foul by Kidoba. And Riley, looking at that first one for Central Michigan, co-own the paint. And the reason I didn't put just solely own the paint is because that's going to be a hard task for Central to be lethal. And then for Bowling Green, keep McKay quiet. He's been phenomenal ever since he's come back from injury. And also taking care of that basketball is going to be very important. As we know, CMU is a team that loves to try and turn the on. Plowden at the free throw line. He leads his team in percentage at 90%. Step back three from Dallas Morgan. Nearly gets the friendly bounce. Romelo Burrell tries to save it, but it's... And what that means is they don't give their opponents a lot of second chance opportunities. And we'll see if CMU can try to change that. Down low, Matos gets it in, uses the turner, creates some space. Here comes Central Michigan again, trying to push the tempo early in this game. Deshaun Winston with the bounce pass, and McKay with the finish. Winston played a lot of meaningful minutes in that game against Western Michigan. 
Devontae Lane went down. They were precautious, but he's back in the starting lineup tonight. And he's been playing phenomenal for the Chippewas. They have him down on that stat sheet. No turnovers since January 11th against Kent State. Winston has been a phenomenal guard. And he's been playing phenomenal for the Chippewas. They have him down on that stat sheet. No turnovers since January 11th against Kent State. Winston has been a phenomenal guard. Kevin McKay setting up the offense. He split the defense and draws the points off of three of four shooting. And we come back to Kevin McKay shooting free throws. He was trying to push their lead to 10. And McKay can't get it to fall. So nearing just about five minutes in. And Bowling Green has been struggling to really get the ball down low where they have the height advantage. But that time it works out. Daquan, but that time it works out. Daquan Plowden averaging 13 points a game finishes. And Winston nearly from coast to coast. It's recovered by Fry. Averaging 13 points a game finishes. And Winston nearly from coast to coast it's recovered by fry fields with a swing pass Bowling green had numbers now they slow it down and that's and where Dylan cmu's fry gotta be careful from outside and from outside and that's what he does best he's already got that title of career three-point leader and he adds another one to the total. And I was going to say, that's exactly where CMU needs to be careful. Fry was coming around those screens, and they really weren't hedging at all, giving him a ton of space. And on that third screen right there, it just looked like he realized how open he was. Shot clock down to five. Burrell, mid-range, no good. And there's Fields with the rebound. And there's Fields with the rebound. Another shot down low won't fall, but Fry with the long rebound and Bowling Green buying themselves another shot. And Riley. Another shot down low won't fall, but Fry with the long rebound and Bowling Green buying themselves another shot. And Riley. Another shot down low won't fall. But Fry with the long rebound and Bowling Green buying themselves another shot. And Riley, you can tell on these last couple of possessions, other than that Fry three, you could tell the Falcons talked in the huddle about getting that ball down low, taking advantage of the height they have. Fry again from outside. No good. Winston brings it down. Down. Central Michigan started on a hot run. Now Bowling Green starting to reel it back in a bit. Quick five to one run for the Falcons. And this is where it's going to be important for CMU to be on it. That half court offense is sometimes where they struggle. Right, another foul down low, even if they're down. So McKay, another trip to the line. He split them the last shots. Haven't attempted another three since we talked about it. McKay makes himself three for four on the night from the six point lead for CMU. That, those fouls we were talking about. Matos already on the bench with two fouls early in this first half. Already three team fouls for the Falcons. And the mid-range from Fry is no good. And both team fouls for the Falcons. And the mid-range from Fry is no good. And both team fouls for the Falcons. And the mid range from Fry is no good. And Bowling Green having to put up a ton of shots here, and that doesn't fall either. A scramble down low. And Bowling Green having to put up a ton of shots here, and that doesn't fall either. A scramble down low. Their second chance point opportunity for Bowling Green that they're not able to take advantage of. But the height issue is going to be a big one for CMU if they don't start blocking out. 
Lane with the spin creates some space. False. So Central Michigan with some defense here has another chance to try to expand it to double digits. Ball movement around the paint. And once again, another bounce that just doesn't go the... Ball movement around the paint. And once again, another bounce that just doesn't go the Falcons' way. And Central Michigan trying to push the tempo. Winston from outside. No good. Winston from outside. No good. Turner beats McKay down low and uses the glass. 30-point game and an overtime victory for the Falcons. He's been somewhat of a Chippewa killer when he faces off against these guys. That last bucket ended a two-and-a-half-minute scoring drought for the Falcons as Lane puts it back in the hoop, back up to an eight-point lead. Michael Laster, one of the first players off the bench for the Falcons. He's played in 21 games but has started none. He leads his team with 65 assists this season, and his jump shot is true. Bar Laster on defense, it looks like he's just a bit too small to guard Devontae Lane as the last two possessions, he's really just backed him down. And there's Laster with an... Devontae Lane as the last two possessions, he's really just backed him down. And there's Laster with an easy layup. Devontae Lane, which you don't usually see very often. Just kind of looked like he was looking over at his head coach, Keno Davis, got a little distracted. Nice job by Laster, having the presence of mind, realizing Devontae Lane wasn't paying attention. Spin move by McKay doesn't pay off. Having the presence of mind, realizing Devontae Lane wasn't paying attention. Spin move by McKay doesn't pay off. And here's Laster again. And he tried to no-look that across the court. Oh, the Falcons coming into this game wanted to slow down the transition game. They've used Caleb Fields and kind of had him at a token full-court pressure to slow down Devontae Lane in the CMU offense. And, Riley, it's worked so far. And Laster will take it himself. He finishes, but they missed a one. Waving his hands in the air. Turner being a 34% three-point shooter. CMU lucky that they missed him on that one. Lane once again continues to work with his back to the basket as Broadway Jr. After the first media timeout, Bowling Green shooting six for 11 cents then. This is going to have to be a moment where Central Michigan has to hunker down and come back with a run of their own. Turner pulls up. It's no good, and there's Lane for the rebound. Turner with maybe a bit of a four shot there. Montgomery from outside, and he misses short. Broadway Jr. uses his length. Montgomery from outside, and he misses short. Broadway Jr. uses his length. The past couple of games for CMU just to combine three points in the last two, but he's still been able to bring some value to this team in other ways that don't really show up on that stat sheet. And that bucket for Broadway Jr. ended nearly a two-minute scoring drop for CMU. So teams having trouble getting that ball in the basket early on. Laster has to pull up from outside. It's no good. The shot clock was under 10. and he had... Laster has to pull up from outside. It's no good. The shot clock was under 10, and he had a quick trigger. To Leo from way downtown, and nothing but net to take that career lead. And what can you do if you're Marlon Sierra? Hand in his face, he's standing on the sea, but still buries it. That's just some of those buckets you're going to have to let go if you're a CMU opponent. The drive down low draws a foul. That was just from beyond the arc. That's something you're not used to seeing from the senior. But 58. Second is good as well. He was named to the first team all Mac last year. He was the first sophomore to do so since Cornelius Cash to earn it in the 72-73 season. As David to the other end. And that's exactly what hitting a deep three like DeLeo did a couple of possessions ago does for you. Now they have to come out and guard way beyond the three-point line. And he can get guys in the air and go to the bucket. And, and he can get guys in the air and go to the bucket and hit that floater. 
And how about that bounce pass down low for the Falcons? But here come the Chippewas and Dallas Morgan immediately look to the officiating crew for a foul. And he had good reason. Laster got pretty much all of his left arm on that one. Look to the officiating crew for a foul. And he had good reason. Laster got pretty much all of his left arm on that one. Another lob down low that goes off the rim. And Another lob down low that goes off the rim. And Central Michigan again pushing the tempo. Devontae Lane falls to the feet in transition. Central Michigan heating up a bit in the last few minutes. Three for their last four from the field. But that three-point shot hasn't been falling as much. That David DeLeo three, only the one out of their last five. And DeLeo gets into the paint. And, and this is where DeLeo is at his most dangerous, when he's able to find those lanes and drive to the bucket, just like he has the last two possessions. And it's going to do what we just talked about, create more open three-point Court and expand their leading home record in the back with 10 and 1 right now. So a scramble right off the inbounds. And they wanted an over and back Central Michigan did, but the Falcons will get away with it. And I think the officials actually made the right call right there. It looked like Kevin McKay got a piece of that basketball. And that's them to a great home record and also a good start to Mac play leading the West at 5 and 2. Dallas Morgan can't hit from the free throw line. Play, leading the West at five and two. Dallas Morgan can't hit from the free throw line. And CMU Riley, despite the miss right there, off to a hot offensive start, shooting nearly 60%. That's why you see him with this seven point lead. The question is going to be will they be able to keep it up? Because that's the type of shooting they're going to need to beat Bowling Green. And Dallas Morgan trying to get down. Shooting nearly 60%. That's why you see him with this seven point lead. The question is going to be will they be able to keep it up? Because that's the type of shooting they're going to need to beat Bowling Green. And Dallas Morgan trying to get down. Dio. Morgan coming onto your screen after bumping into Fry. Winston controlling this offense right now. DeLeo with the turnaround. He leaves it short. But McKay fights for the rebound. Winston controlling this offense right now. DeLeo with the turnaround. He leaves it short. But McKay fights for the rebound. Winston controlling this offense right now. DeLeo with the turnaround. He leaves it short. But McKay fights for the rebound. They just missed Deshaun Winston with a carry right there. A small hesitation. Fitchell could have blew it. Kevin McKay goes up, and he's fouled again. He'd be straight up as all you want, but if you're making contact with him, the official's going to have to blow the whistle. And Kevin McKay had to use every second since the Falcons have found the ball in the basket. And Kevin McKay, two favorable bounces from the Eagles of the Falcons. you got to give your hats off to this CMU defense. It's this defense that allows the most points per game in the MAC. But they've really turned it on today to start this one. Making sure those passing lanes aren't open. And there's a head coach for Bowling Green, Michael Huger, in his fifth year. And he's done a great job of turning this program around. Went from 16-16 and 16 in the 17-18 season to 22-12 and 12 and now 17-5. and 5, Improving in the MAC each of those years. Rob Montgomery with the rebound. Now 17 and 5, improving in the match each of those years. Rob Montgomery with the rebound. Very strong rebound amongst all those trees. The height advantage is so noticeable for the Falcons, but the way CMU's interior defense has started to play, it's becoming a little less noticeable. Morgan, a quick trigger, and he rolls it in. Quick trigger, and he rolls it in. And Dallas Morgan, you can tell when he decides to pull up because they punch him right back. And a big part and thanks to guys like Dallas Morgan and David DeLeo, who they barely missed. So the Falcons trying to score here. And it does roll in for Justin Turner. The 
Turner already has six points. He's someone that I wouldn't be surprised to see Bowling Green lean on late here in this first half, as he's usually instant offense. And Montgomery tried to use the spin, but he picks up the traveling. That was something that's going to have quite the imp imprint on this game. As Central Michigan, they have the highest turnover margin in the MAC, a little above four. Well, Bowling Green, they don't turn it over often as well, as they have the highest assist to turnover ratio. And a foul called down low. Fourth team foul for Central Michigan. Turner going back to work. And Laster steps back and gets it to fall. Open jumper. How about Laster? Early eight points, a guy who only averages around four. Without him, you'd imagine this deficit would be even larger for the Falcons. And here's Kevin McKay. Again, using that right side. But it's no good. Plowed in with the rebound. And here's Kevin McKay. Again, using that right side. But it's no good. Plowed in with the rebound. He leads this team with eight and a half rebounds per game. And Turner with a lot of momentum there. Green, You saw it in their most recent game against Buffalo, even against Ball State. They find themselves down around Turner at the free throw line. Just a couple hours away from here, he went to Detroit Renaissance. Pleasant for one of the top tier MAC matchups so far this season. Respective division leaders. And Central Michigan's offense has proven to have the upper hand early on. So Montgomery will draw the foul, but no. One for five, Central Michigan five for nine. That's a huge indicator and a huge difference. Michigan from the three and you're seeing Rob Montgomery, Montgomery there. He's hit one of two from outside tonight. But this offense is averaging 82 and a half points per game. Behind Gonzaga with 88 and a half and Duke with 83 and a half. Just shows you how dangerous this Chippewa team is. They're 9 and 0 this season when they score at least 80 points. So that's a mark where Bowling Greens want to keep their eyes on. And the back cut. That's a mark where Bowling Greens want to keep their eyes on. And the back cut from Caleb Fields gets them back on the board. And Devontae Lane coming up a bit gimpy, and he'd hurt that leg in the Western Michigan game. It was questionable how healthy he was and if he was going to able to go today, and I'm sure they're going to want to check on him. 12 rebounds, and he's doing it again here tonight. Foul on the other end. Bench. And this is only Mitchell's ninth game of the season. He's someone that CMU hasn't used a ton off the bench. But now with Devontae Lane injured, the foul trouble on Deshaun Winston, P.J. Lane's going to get an opportunity. P.J. Mitchell, excuse me. Bowling Green being a bit more patient this time as Turner pulls from deep, rattles it home. So back within five points. Under three minutes to play in this first half. Bowling Green has gone five for their last six from the field. Now you see that pressure around the perimeter kind of taking a step up for Bowling Green. Dallas Morgan uses this screen from Rob Montgomery. Morgan uses this screen from Rob Montgomery to drain another three. Riley, they turned up the pressure to take away shots like those, but he's still able to create some space, get open enough to launch it. They might just want to switch defenders totally on him. Another foul, and then Bowling Green will run. And back to Central Michigan. And that's really been this whole first half. Central Michigan just did it first, and now they continue to lead. Morgan with two defenders right on him. He's got 16. And the Falcons have their strongest defender, Caleb Fields, up and in his face. They're not switching on any of those screens. This is just a zone that Dallas Morgan is in. And that time it's Morgan is in. And that time it's Justin Turner between two defenders finishing at the rim. Kevin McKay, he's been pretty undeniable when he gets down there. And that's a
struggle defending Kevin McKay. And you cannot leave Daquan Plowden all alone on an island guarding Kevin McKay. He'll turn his back to you, back to the basket, and do exactly what he just did right there, and that's get a high-quality look. Plowden from outside, and he misses everything back to central. They're struggling, and that's a big reason why they find themselves down double digits, Riley, because the Chippewas having no problem shooting those threes, while Bowling Green, not the case. And McKay trying to find his shooters outside. Drawing in that defense, it'll be Montgomery, and he misses everything. So back to just a catch and shoot, or he's really set. Pull back like that's really not something he has. Under a minute left to play in this first half. Turner trying to set up the offense for the Falcons. And Plowden stops, tries to pop, no good. And Central Michigan held the Falcons down to a low shot. And Plowden stops, tries to pop, no good. And Central Michigan held the Falcons down to a low shot. And Plowden stops, tries to pop, no good. And Central Michigan held the Falcons down to a low shot clock, and now they have a chance for the last shot. No shot clock for Central Michigan, and they have 15 seconds to work. Now the question for Central Michigan, who do you go to? Dallas Morgan's been extremely hot, and also Kevin McKay as of late. Just about five seconds left to work. DeLeo puts it up at the buzzer, and he's got it! Back in the second half, already underway as Bowling Green trying to make a comeback in the second half as there we see Tyler, there we see Tyler Matos, who wasn't a big factor in the first half because of the foul trouble he was in, but already an easy layup. Riley, feel like it's worth mentioning Devontae Lane still not on the floor for Central Michigan. Well, that was somewhat of the same case against Western Michigan in their last game, and Deshaun Winston really stepped up in that game. The Broncos. Dallas Morgan continues to put up points for the Chippewa. Mentioned Deshaun Winston stepping up. That's exactly what he has done for Central Michigan when that play has begun. Coming, coming into it, he averaged around six points per game. He's got that up to around seven. He's averaging nine when it comes to Mac opponents. He's been a real nice guard off the bench. Miss Q. Sean Winston. Still scoreless so far tonight. Just missed both shots he's taken. But they haven't necessarily needed it so far. Already three scores in double digits for Central Michigan. Winston, there it is, the mid-range. That's his, he's done it all season long, and he drains another. That's exactly right, that is where he loves to get. Surprise Bowling Green allowed him to get around that screen so easily. Dylan Fry with this step back, and that's deadly. He's a guy in this Bowling Green offense that can really get them going. He's hit a few, or just one deep ball tonight. Now up to five points. He's hit a few, or just one deep ball tonight. It's now up to five points. Matos. He leaves it short. And Winston fighting for the rebound down low. Matos. He leaves it short. And Winston fighting for the rebound down low. Dallas Morgan from outside, no good. And you can see how much of a difference Matos makes when he's in this game. Dallas Morgan from outside, no good. And you can see how much of a difference Matos makes when he's in this game. A few early fouls is speaking of toast and try to get him foul number four because if they pick up the fourth, you'd imagine they'd be on the bench for quite a while. They played six so far in this game. Turner sinks the free throws. Central Michigan. Or an 11-point lead now after that second one. 
Surprised to see Bowling Green laying off that full court token pressure. Probably why Central Michigan's been able to get so comfortable on the lead now after that second one. Surprised to see Bowling Green laying off that full court token pressure. Probably why Central Michigan's been able to get so comfortable on the offensive end. Turner from outside. He's got it. Dylan Fry being out a majority of that first half, you can tell really hurt Bowling Green. And a lot of bumping down low. And I can't blame him because Kevin McKay's been having a pretty easy day down low. David DeLeo, he's been efficient from the field tonight. Yeah, Riley, five for six. Every look for DeLeo has been a pretty darn good one. Him and Dallas Morgan have been way too wide open. Fry took the three, but he's still getting out to a hot start. And either way, these are two of the best teams in the Mid-American Conference to this point, leading their respective divisions. But Bowling Green has found ways to win. It hasn't been easy. The scores have been close. But they found a way to get into that victory column. It's found ways to win. It hasn't been easy. The scores have been close. But they found a way to get into that victory column. And Turner, who had a little hesitation. Out and such a solid job of doing within Mac play. And that's pressuring the opposition, making them have some unforced errors like we just saw right there. Montgomery takes off from the left. Every other person has two. It's Justin Turner who has no fouls. Especially on that last one. Surprised they were so. Montgomery's free throw goes coming into this game. It's been a very important player for Central Michigan down low. And as we've talked about expanding the floor, but those free throws are starting to become more frequent. Fry from the corner. Looked like he dropped that one from the rafters as McKay fights for the rebound. He fights for the rebound. That corner's his sweet spot. Surprise, that one didn't go down. Morgan from the corner. No good. McKay with the rebound again. And a quick pass that earns another. That corner's his sweet spot. Surprise, that one didn't go down. Morgan from the corner. No good. McKay with the rebound again. And a quick pass that earns another. That corner's his sweet spot. Surprise, that one didn't go down. Morgan from the corner, no good. McKay with the rebound again, and a quick pass that earns another. CMU offensively so far, they look good in the second half. Bit of deja vu, Montgomery back to. Up to nine points now on the night. 14 point lead. It's been a 5-0 run over the last minute and a half for the Chippewas. Now that CMU kind of weathered the small storm, the run that Bowling Green came out in those first two minutes, you start to question what adjustments are the Falcons going to start to make? The three goes down for Caleb Fields. The Falcons needed that one. And Rob Montgomery, it's a nothing run, and the Falcons won that game by one point. They've done a good job at winning those close games, and that's the reason that they're 8-1 in Mid-American Conference play. David DeLeo off with a three. Winning those close games, and that's the reason that they're 8-1 in Mid-American Conference play. David DeLeo off with a three. That's a really good look there for Central Michigan. DeLeo, plenty of space off that screen. Fry from deep, and Morgan with the rebound. Good look there for Central Michigan. DeLeo, plenty of space off that screen. Fry from deep. And Morgan with the rebound. And Winston finishing nicely off glass. And finishing nicely off glass. And there's that fast break offense we were missing from the Chippewas in the first half. They want to go back to it now up 13. I mean, hey, it's a perfect time. And Plowden has to scramble for it. And Dallas Morgan... Trying to pull a quick one and on the ground. Riley, you could just tell from that scramble on the ground, like you mentioned. I feel the effort for the Chippewas has been the best it's been all year, at least what from what I've seen. As you can tell, this is a game they really want 
A lot of people didn't give him a lot of respect coming into the season. Picked to finish fourth in the Mac West, and they're still keeping this phenomenal start up. And DeLeo with the mismatch down low, and a foul. Michael Laster comes back in, along with Marlon Sierra. And you could tell Fry looked over towards the bench at his head coach, Huger. He had a decision to make, keep Fry in with three, but it looks like he's going to trust his senior to continue to play solid defense without fouling. Winston looking for an option, less than five on the shot clock. Step back for Dallas Morgan. It's no good, and he had his entire team up on their feet on the bench. Looking for an option, less than five on the shot clock. Step back for Dallas Morgan. It's no good, and he had his entire team up on their feet on the bench. Laster to Fields, and he's got it from outside. Transition. Justin Turner does a phenomenal job of filling the lanes correctly in transition. He loves to go to that left corner. That's the second one in the second half already. Also, his teammates do a good job of knowing exactly where he's at. Dallas Morgan nearly gets stripped. DeLeo, and he's got it from outside. Closer to that program record. He's chasing Josh Kaczynski, came into this game needing seven. He's hit three tonight. And Diggs earns the foul. Nice to see David DeLeo react like that. He got him on that left arm. Can't capitalize on the free throw, but now we're seeing a little bit of fourth here in this second half, something that Bowling Green really can't afford to do. Winston down low again. And Corey Redmond comes in for the rebound. DeLeo. Winston down low again. And Corey Redmond comes in for the rebound. DeLeo. Winston down low again. And Corey Redmond comes in for the rebound. DeLeo on the move from three. He's got it. And you can tell as soon as that ball hits his hands, he's ready to go right up with it. One of the quickest releases in the MAC. Falcons got to be careful here. It's starting to get into a dangerous territory. 18 points tied for the team lead for David DeLeo. And the defense for Central Michigan coming in abundance. The 18 points tied for the team lead for David DeLeo. And the defense for Central Michigan coming in abundance. The no-look pass to Burrell. And Broadway Jr. wanted the foul. Could be a 50-50 call there. Broadway Jr. playing some tight defense. And it earns the foul. David DeLeo, four of his last five shots. Those all being from outside. Turner is that number one scoring option for the Falcons over this season. With a step back three, it fell away the line. He's six for six tonight. 88% on the season as he makes another. Pacific, the final six minutes of their last three games. He's had 28 points, 10 for 12 from the field, including him. Scored 16 of his 20 points against Ball State in the final six minutes. That was on January 28th. One of the most clutch players on this Falcon squad. And it's going to be interesting to see if CMU decides to stick Kevin McKay on him for the remainder of the second half, one of their strongest perimeter defenders. And Kevin McKay through the con. So once again, a 13-point lead for Central Michigan. Turner looking for options. And there's Diggs from outside. Rattles it home. Defense was there, but Diggs hit it anyways. Shooting 38% from outside. That's the team leading percentage. Now if you're Bowling Green, you're starting to get some of those shots to fall on the offensive end, but the stops have not been easy to come by. Burrell 
tried to finish from the baseline. And Riley, you knew a second half comeback is what they're going to need in this second half. And they're off to a good start. Tooting 63% from the floor, 80%. Burrell is able to split the pair at the line. Came into this game shooting 70% from the free throw line. Dylan Fry really looking to get something started. Just has the five points tonight. From the corner, there's Turner again. But it's no good. And just has the five points tonight. From the corner, there's Turner again, but it's no good. And it's coming out a, a bit confused after that happened, but they shook each other. Montgomery has been there quite a bit tonight. He's seven for seven so far. Make that eight for eight. So 100% from the overall for the entire Central Michigan team. That'll continue to be big as this game dwindles down to its final moments. How Central Michigan will be able to perform at that free throw line. Because the free ones, those are the ones you got to get. Turner with the wide open shot. You knew that one was probably good. Offense, he has 27 points on 7 of 11 from the field. That includes four triples. And now you can see that defensive pressure taking it up a notch for Bowling Green as... Just 16 left on the shot clock. The ball went out of bounds last off the Falcons. And Fry nearly comes away with the steal. The turnaround jumper no good. And Burrell loses it out of... And Fry nearly comes away with the steal. The turnaround jumper no good. And Burrell loses it out of knee of Burrell. Pressed to see Bowling Green have a nice defensive stand with their best defender, Caleb Fields, sitting on the bench currently. He has a couple fouls. And digs from mid range. And it's just an eight point lead. I'm sorry, Rod. Here's this small run that you knew was just going to come from Bowling Green. And now all you have to ask is how is he going to respond? Morgan with the floater. It's no good, but he gets his own rebound. And there's the putback. Going to respond. Morgan with the floater. It's no good, but he gets his own rebound. And there's the putback. Good, but he gets his own rebound. And there's the putback. Dallas Morgan with a team leading 20 points. And Turner with a quick three. And there's Fry with the rebound. Laster is the one. Dallas Morgan with a team leading 20 points. And Turner with a quick three. And there's Fry with the rebound. Laster is the one who Dallas Morgan with a team leading 20 points and Turner with a quick three and there's Fry with the rebound. Laster is the one who is the one who finally gets the bucket for Bowling Green but they're turning up the tempo. Central Michigan will slow it back down. That's 10 points for Michael Laster. Montgomery from three. No good, and Sierra with the rebound. Here come the Falcons. That's 10 points for Michael Laster. Montgomery from three. No good, and Sierra with the rebound. Here come the Falcons. And a foul on the other end. They're going to get Rob Montgomery. Has the ability to pull this in even closer. Bowling Green hitting three of their last four shots from the field. And they can thank Justin Turner for keeping him this close. He's too short on that shot, but he ends up with the ball again. They can thank Justin Turner for keeping him this close. He's too short on that shot, but he ends up with the ball again. They can thank Justin Turner for keeping him this close. He's too short on that shot, but he ends up with the ball again. And Diggs, with the hesitation, had an open shot, but left it too short. And Diggs, with the hesitation, had an open shot, but left it too short. So Central Michigan slowing it down. Haven't seen Kevin McKay work down low in quite some time. 
And he still has that much larger defender, Sierra, on him. I wouldn't be surprised if they give it to McKay somewhere out around this perimeter and just give him the ball and let him go. The three off. And the Falcons have another chance. Surprised that they give it to McKay somewhere out around this perimeter and just give him the ball and let him go. The three off. And the Falcons have another chance. Laster nearly got down there clean. And he missed another chance. Laster nearly got down there clean. And he missed another chance. Laster nearly got down there clean. And he misses. Morgan trying to do the same on the other end. And he gets it to go. This late in the game, a 10-point deficit, you'd imagine almost every single shot attempt for Bowling Green is going to come from Turner right there or Fry. So the Chippewas just trying to hang on to this 10-point lead. And McKay has the ball swatted out. It has been tough to come by. Nearly scoreless over the last two minutes. Inbound pass goes a little too far, but Dallas Morgan has been one of those leaders offensively for the Chippewas. Has 22 tonight. And a foul on the floor as he's dropped. But Dallas Morgan, after having a quiet game against Western Michigan, really has shown out in a game where Central really needed him to. On that drive. And Morgan able to get his total. Biggest lead tonight for CMU has been 15 points. Sits at 12 right now. And Fry with this step back. And he's got it over Rob Montgomery. Stuck with him the whole time. But there's a reason that Dylan Fry has been such a great basketball player for Bowling Green. And it's that ability with that outside shot. It's most guys, when they attempt that shot, their coach is instantly stomping on the ground, unhappy with it. But Fry has that ability. Almost the green light, just like Dallas Morgan has. Instantly stomping on the ground, unhappy with it. But Fry has that ability. Almost the green light, just like Dallas Morgan has. Instantly stomping on the ground, unhappy with it. But Fry has that ability. Almost the green light, just like Dallas Morgan has. Central Michigan resetting. So Winston was serviceable off the bench pretty much all season. It's Kevin McKay. Can't finish. It's Kevin McKay. Can't finish. First trip for David DeLeo to the free throw line tonight. So one of the best free throw shooters on this team. What this offense does, because with him on the bench, you got to guess that the ball's going to go to Turner. And double a guy like that is they usually just use him or Fry on this offensive end. DeLeo's total now up to 20 for CMU. This is the 11th straight game that he's been in double-digit points. The three nearly falls down for Laster. Laster. But the Chippewas gobble it up. Just about six minutes left to play in Mount Pleasant. Now you can see CMU taking some time, getting in the half-court set. As with a 10-point lead, six minutes left, you don't want to necessarily slow everything down, but you definitely want to chew some time off that clock. And another missed shot for CMU. CMU tonight, 10 for Bowling Green, which is right at their average this season. The turnover margin for Central Michigan is good, though. Plus four and a half is the ball game. That's why Central Michigan finds themselves with a five and two record within the MAC. Not only, like you said, Ryler, are they taking care of the basket. Devonte Lane has very active hands. This whole team has really decided to give it their all. Here comes that full court pressure from the Falcons. The defensive change we knew was coming. Central Michigan. Getting it down quick, and Montgomery was patient. DeLeo picks it up, fires. Central Michigan getting it down quick, and Montgomery was patient. DeLeo picks it up, fires. Central Michigan getting it down quick, and Montgomery was patient. DeLeo picks it up, fires.
bullseye. He has been great from outside. He's now five for six, just two off from owning that record for Central Michigan. And Fields finishes at the rim. Have to give credit to Bowling Green. They haven't gone away this entire game. Central Michigan has put some pretty good runs together, but the Falcons have really just battled back with points of their own. And Montgomery tried to save it from going out of bounds, but both really just battled back with points of their own. And Montgomery tried to save it from going out of bounds, but Bowling Green has numbers and great patience there from Joe lays it in. As Eli mentioned, there's that pressure from Bowling Green. And Winston going coast to coast. No good from the seat of his pick from Bowling Green. And Winston going coast to coast. No good from the seat of his pick from Bowling Green. And Winston going coast to coast. No good from the seat of his pants. It's DeLeo. It's DeLeo. His sixth three-pointer of the night. When things are going right, they're going right. Back-to-back -back threes from DeLeo, and they look like turnovers. When things are going right, they're going right. Back-to-back -back threes from DeLeo, and they look like turnovers moments before. Dallas Morgan with the pull-up. It's no good. Turner with Leo, and they look like turnovers moments before. Dallas Morgan with the pull-up. It's no good. Turner with the rebound. And if Bowling Green wants a chance, they need some quick points. Game has four minutes left, a 12-point deficit. It's now or never. Doesn't matter how many fouls you got at this point. It's to go down. David DeLeo from outside. How many times have we said that? He's now tied for third in the MAC, but also tied with teammate Josh Kaczynski with 306 career three-pointers. Love that decision there from Winston. Instead of driving to the bucket, decided to pull it out like he does again right here because at this point, Keno Davis is comfortable with telling his team to slow things down and eat some time off that clock. And Winston trying to hand off to Morgan, but another foul with this lead with just 349 left. Coming back with some Dallas. David DeLeo just passed him for the team lead. But Morgan sinks both of those. And David DeLeo, Dallas Morgan sit at top. The CMU team in scoring with 26 points apiece. And Dylan Fry uses his screen beautifully to get down. So Winston slowing down the offense. Central Michigan can feel comfortable with the ball in Deshaun Winston's hands. Because you got to remember, Fry has those four fouls. So if anyone's going to foul or have that high-pressure defense for Bowling Green, it's not going to be him most likely. And McKay looking for somewhere to go. And the shot goes right over the rim. Digs with the rebound. Him most likely. And McKay looking for somewhere to go. And the shot goes right over the rim. Digs with the rebound. Turner with the floater. Kevin McKay right there to try to stop it. And DeLeo with the rebound. So still the 10 point lead for CMU. So now as we inch closer to that two minute mark too, you gotta start to think, when does Bowling Green start to foul and send some Chippewas to the free throw line? Winston trying to make some room. Shot clock at five. Dallas Morgan from way downtown. Oh my goodness, is that cold? Dylan Fry nearly gets two points back on the other end. But what a mesmerizing performance from Dallas Morgan and David DeLeo from outside. Combined for 11 threes this game, and now we're nearly at two minutes left to play. And you could tell with how both David DeLeo and Dallas Morgan opened up this game that it was going to be up to the Falcons to try and slow them down. And with the looks they've been able to get, not doing a solid job, Bowling Green is. This Winston's first trip. Solid defense, knocked down some free throws, and you should be able to escape with your sixth Mac win. 
Wentz to both. Bowling Green hasn't scored in nearly two minutes again. Another drought for the Falcons. Diggs with a turnaround. Tried to create his own space. The denial by Kevin McKay down low. And on Diggs with a turnaround. Tried to create his own space. The denial by Kevin McKay down low. And on both ends in the paint, he has played phenomenal tonight. Once again, CMU using up that clock. Just a minute and a half left to play. Ten seconds left on the shot clock. And Winston will take it to the cut. And nearly has it drop from the shot clock. And Winston will take it to the cut. And nearly has it drop. Some unfriendly spin off the backboard really made that one pop back out. And a foul called down low. Going to have a held ball. You mentioned travel. But that's the one thing you cannot avoid. Three-point play the old-fashioned way. Under a minute left to play. Central Michigan with a 12-point lead. David DeLeo sitting at 6 of 7 from the field. He needs one to become the all-time leader for three-pointers at CMU. He pulls from deep. No good. At CMU. He pulls from deep. No good. Just 30 seconds left. And there's an easy bucket for Chandler. Nation to Justin Turner as there's no shot clock left. And 20 seconds to tick off. Central Michigan comes out and plays a great game against the number one team in the MAC. Bowling Green had slipped away with single digit wins in Mid American Conference play quite a few times. But Central Michigan will stay atop the Mac West as that's final a 10 point